Okay, so we've installed a whole bunch of plugins and we've activated a whole bunch of plugins. Um, one of those is a Kismet, which actually comes with WordPress as a default plugin. Now, the first thing you'll notice is at the top it says a Kismet is almost ready. You must enter your Kismet API for it to work. Okay, what we need to do, first of all, is click on that link, which takes us to the Kismet plugin page, the settings page. And then we need to go across to a Kismet to actually get an API key. Now, if you right click on here and choose open in new tab, it will take you across to this page, the Kismet uh, sign up page, basically, and it will ask you to get an Kismet API key. So click on that and it will bring up another page where you have to choose which level you want. Now, there are several options here. There's pro, enterprise and high volume. Or if you look down the bottom, there's personal site, which is what we want. Click on that and look at the moment, they're defaulting to $3. Well, uh, I'm actually gonna pop that down to zero. You can pay for it later on when you're earning lots of money from your blogs, then obviously contribute to your heart's content. But for the moment, until you get up and running and earning some money, you probably want the free version. So put in your name, your last name, email, confirm email, and an earl if you want to you don't have to put that in okay um, so it's mainly your name and your email and confirm your email then click on continue you'll end up on a page like this which says we've sent you a copy of your api key via email you'll then end up with an email that will look like this okay um, this i've just basically copied this into a text pad so i could replace the real one with a fictional number here uh, and hide out my password but you'll end up with a number that's this long different numbers and characters and you basically need to copy that and paste it into your akismic key page okay i'm just going to grab my real one i have to blank this out in the video okay so pop that in there now auto delete spam submitted on posts more than a month old tick that to say yes this one's this is a fairly new option. Uh, I think that's actually quite cool, so I'm going to tick that as well. And all I need to do now is click on Update Options. Now you should be able to use your Akismet API key for more than one blog. If you do, it will probably uh, pop up with a message saying you've already used this on one blog. Don't worry about that. Just go ahead and click on Yes. That is Akismet setup. Uh, that will basically stop a lot of the spam it won't stop all the spam comments but it will do a lot of good for you um, so it's well worth having set up okay let's move on to the next plugin that we need to have a look at okay so what we'll do is we'll open up the dashboard and we'll take a quick look at akismet stats now that we've active activated akismet we'll have a stats page that's working for it obviously there's nothing there yet but this will have some interesting stats on how much spam akismet stops for us WP Stats, again, we'll have no information really on here yet, but this is some interesting info on number of visits, number of tags, pages, some general info that can be quite useful. The next one we want to have a look at is under Plugins, and it's called Plugin Central. Now, this is a very useful plugin. Basically, if we click on List Active Plugins, it will list the plugins that are active, and if any of them are red, then it will allow us to update them because it, that we're not on the latest version, basically. So it checks to see if they do need updating, and then it allows us to update all of those that do need updating automatically. Okay, uh, the more we can automate, the more spare time we have, which is always important. The next one we're going to have a quick look at is tools and backup. Now this is important because you're going to get to a stage where you've got a lot of data on your blog, a lot of posts, a lot of useful, important information, and you want to make sure you've got a backup of it in case anything goes wrong. And trust me, it's not something you're going to remember to do manually. You've got to have this set up to do it automatic. The simplest way of doing it is scrolling down and having a scheduled backup. And personally, I just have it once weekly. I uh, tag the extras here to tick them and we'll just click on schedule backup so that will automatically send to my email address there we go it's saved uh, a backup of the WordPress database to that email address that I specified once a week and I can pop that somewhere in my hard disk and back it up and save it and I know I've got a copy of that okay very easy to set up the next one we're going to have a look at is if we go into settings we've got a few in here that we can look at 
is CBNet Ping Optimizer. Now we put our ping list in earlier on and that's appearing here automatically so we don't need to repeat it. It's picked that up for us. What we do want to do here is limit excessive pinging because what WordPress can do is send out a ping every time you update a blog post. So imagine you've written your post and you have a look at it and you spot there's a, uh, a spelling mistake in there so you hit update after correcting it and you're reading on through it again and you, look, you spot something else that you want to change so you hit update again you've just sent three pings. Um, you don't want to be pinging that often so this will basically limit excessive pinging. I'd leave it to uh, well at least 15 minutes, possibly 25 minutes, something like that. It's not going to hurt having it to slightly longer than 15 minutes and just click on save settings. That's very easy to set up and well worth doing. Okay, let me just minimize some of these so we can see where we're going next. Next after that is post teaser and post teaser is a neat little function, a little plugin that allows us to just show uh, a portion of the blog post. Um, let's actually have a look at an example on one of my blogs. This is a blog post where basically it's cut it off before the end. So instead of displaying the full blog post, which could be much, much longer, it's cutting it off after a certain number of words, which you decide on, and it's then putting a little summary. So read the full post, 250 words, estimated one minute. Uh, so it's probably not a long post, that one. But you can see basically it's cut it off after a certain number of words. And that is completely up to us. We decide how many words here. Now, I wouldn't leave it at the standard 100. Uh, make it something a bit longer, let's say, and something random, say 142. Okay, the rest of the information here, the standard stuff, you can leave as it is. However, I do also tick the show read more link at the end of teased post. Basically, the other reason for this, or there's a couple of reasons for it. First of all, it stops us having duplicate content because the, the whole of the post could be on the main page and on an internal page such as categories, etc. But it also means that when people see our homepage, if they're interested in a post, they're more likely to click and go through to read the rest of the post, which is increases the value of our site in the eyes of Google because Google see that someone's gone deeper into our site. So it's a good site in their eyes. So it's well worth having this uh, installed and just make sure that tick options there. Scroll down to the bottom. Don't worry about the advanced tease options uh, and just click on update options. And that's that one done. Okay, next one is what would Seth Godin do, which is WWSGD, and this really all you need to decide is whether you want it appearing before the post or after the post. I normally go for after the post because if someone's read the full post, that's when they're most likely to sign up to our RSS feed. And basically, what that, that's what this is. It's giving people an extra option to get onto our RSS feed. We'll have to explain more about RSS later, but trust me, this is a good thing because it's going to get them to come back to your blog whenever you post the new post. Okay. You also need to decide how many times they're going to see this message that pops up. Um, I'm just going to leave it as, well, I'm going to change it to four. Uh, in fact, maybe three, because I don't want it popping up too many times. So basically, that means it will only appear for the first three times that that visitor comes to our blog. Okay, so again, just click on Save Settings, and that one's updated. The other ones here, WCP Super Cache, I'll come back to you later on in another video. I'll also do the same for related posts because that is partly reliant upon the theme you're using and we may need to make changes to your theme. So that's probably going to have to be a longer video all on its own. Okay, so the last two we'll look at in this video are Facebook share and tweet meme, which are social media, social bookmarking buttons, basically. So if we click on settings for that one, it's fairly simple. You can actually leave all these settings as they are. Uh, they're fairly simple things like whether you want the number included here, the counter, uh, whether you want it a link instead of a button, whether you want it to appear before the post, after the post, before and after, which is probably a bit over the top. Uh, I tend to leave them just as they are but feel free to play around with these settings if you want to. Um, and just click Save Settings, just to make sure it's updated and is appearing. And the same for Tweet Meme, just go in, have a look at the settings, and make sure that you're happy with the settings for this. It's the same sort of thing, whether you want it before or after, whether you want a button uh, or a link, etc. Okay, standard stuff. The Earl Shortener, again, I tend to leave that as a default. You can change it if you want to. You can even put in your Twitter name there for retweets if you want. Um, 
again have a play around with it you're not going to break it it's uh, quite useful but you can just leave it as the standard settings as it were and get on with it that way okay the last plugin WP optimize that if we bring it up quickly uh, basically this allows us to tidy things up you'll often end up with revisions post revisions and drafts and spam comments and things like that and it'll tell you here if you've got them and you can just tick whichever ones of these you want to it will also check your database tables so for instance here I've got some that need optimizing okay so that's taking up extra space slowing things down so I've ticked that extra box and all I'm going to do is click on process and it will optimize those tables, get rid of the junk for me, etc. So very quick and easy to run, very useful tool or plugin to have on your blog. Okay, so those are the basic plugins uh, installed. I'll do another video next for WordPress SEO because that really needs to be covered in a separate video because there's quite a lot going on there. Thanks very much for watching. Please move on to the next training video.